In today's video, we'll dive into the best seats in economy and the seats that you should be avoiding at all costs. I'll also explain why my favorite seat after hundreds of flights, the aisle seat, is no longer my top pick. Let's kick things off with the pros and the cons of the aisle, middle, and window seats. For window seats, the pros include a nice view during takeoff and landing, extra support since you can lean against the side of the plane which might make it easier to get comfortable and fall asleep, there are also fewer interruptions since you can stay seated while others in your row get up and down. Sitting at the window also means you have less exposure to others which could reduce your chances of getting sick. The cons of being seated by the window include limited mobility since it's more challenging to get up for the restroom or to stretch your legs since you'll need to ask the passengers in the middle and the aisle seat to let you out. And sometimes your seatmates are going to be sleeping, which means you'll need to wake them up or awkwardly shimmy past them in order to get out. And then sometimes they are awake, but they seem to think it's okay to make you do this instead of getting out of their seat. We do not like those passengers. Please don't be one. Window seats also tend to be colder, and then deplaning might take slightly longer, especially if the passengers in the middle and aisle seat of your row decide to take their time getting off the plane. As for the aisle seats, these have historically been my favorite since I love having the option to get up without having to ask permission or to awkwardly climb over someone. Aisle seats are convenient for frequent restroom breaks and stretching your legs. You can even briefly extend your legs into the aisle if no one is coming by. Don't abuse this since you are not technically supposed to be blocking the aisle, but little appropriately timed leg stretches into the aisle should be okay. Just watch for carts. Aisle seats also mean faster disembarking upon landing, and it's easier to evacuate in the emergency if safety is a concern. Aisle seats can also be better for working, since you can extend your arm into the aisle if you do decide to work on a laptop, and I do also have a sneaky hack for aisle seats that I will share at the end. As for the cons, seatmates will disturb you since you will need to stand up whenever they want to get out of the row of seats. And it is your responsibility if you are sitting in the aisle to stand up, please don't be that person that ends up leaning back and making someone awkwardly climb over you. Not cool. Aisle seats also leave you more exposed to other passengers and crew members, which could increase your chances of catching a bug or even just getting bumped by people as they move through the cabin. Flight crew may also need to lean over you to be able to serve those in the middle and the window seat of your row. And when you're seated in the aisle, you have no plane side to sleep against. Just another passenger, which I do not recommend sleeping on. Despite these cons, aisle seats have always been my preference and what I would recommend to any nervous flyers since they feel less claustrophobic than middle and window seats. But things are changing, which we will get into next right after we talk about the pros and the cons of the middle seats. Mostly cons. These cons include limited space being sandwiched between two strangers, no window view, no plane side to lean against, and then still having to ask the passenger in the aisle seat to move for you to get up. It's like combining the worst aspects of the aisle and the window seat into one. And usually I would say the only pro of being in the middle seat is that the person that is seated in the middle gets first dibs on both of the armrests beside them. But here is where things get interesting. A major airline just announced a big change to their economy boarding process and will be implementing Wilma. Not that Wilma. United Airlines' new Wilma boarding process stands for window, middle, and aisle. This is the order that economy passengers will be boarding the flight. I'm still not sure how the L fits in. After first class passengers and those with some elite status board, anyone that is seated in economy with a window seat or an exit row seat will get on the plane, followed by passengers with middle seats, and then those with an aisle seat will be the last to board. It sounds good to be in an aisle seat because you get to spend the least amount of time on the plane. But no, it is not good, and here's why. Overhead bin space is available on a first-come, first-serve basis. So if you are in economy and you choose an aisle seat, you are going to be the last passenger on the plane and there will likely not be any space left for your carry-on luggage. That means that you will be forced to check your carry-on suitcase and have it thrown around by airline staff and then wait for it to, hopefully, arrive on the luggage belt in one piece and in a timely manner. If you are flying with United Airlines, consider opting for a window or a middle seat instead of the aisle seat. I'll leave a link in the description with all of the info on United Airlines' new boarding process. And once you've finished learning all of the intimate details of Wilma, 
It is also important to remember that where you sit on the plane goes well beyond just choosing a window, middle, or aisle seat. When it comes to the right or the left side of the plane, choose based on the side that you sleep on if you plan to sit at a window and lean against the side wall. If you are sitting in an aisle and want to get work done, then choose the side of the plane that allows you to extend your dominant arm into the aisle. And if you have no preference, opt for the right side of the plane as it tends to be less occupied. And more important than the side of the plane that you choose to sit on is whether you choose to sit near the front, middle, or the back of the cabin. The front of the plane means faster boarding, which could secure you overhead bin space, and faster deplaning at the end of the flight, which is especially useful for tight connections or getting to the front of immigration lines. The front of the plane is also served first, so your meal choice will likely be in stock, and then the front can be a little bit quieter in comparison to the back of the plane where the engines are located. But while you might avoid engine noises, the front of the plane is also where parents with babies and toddlers tend to be seated, and it also just tends to be busier than the back of the plane in general. I personally prefer the engine noises that you get at the back of the cabin as opposed to the people noises that you get at the front. If you also dislike people, I'm joking, mostly then closer to the back might be a better option. You definitely have a better chance at getting a row to yourself when you are near the back of the plane cabin. But depending on which airline you fly with, sitting near the back might mean that you board last and then you don't have any overhead bin space for your carry-on. The back of the plane also tends to be a bumpier ride in comparison to the middle of the plane where you are over the wings. But despite the bumps, Studies show that passengers at the back of the plane tend to have a better chance of surviving in the case of a plane crash. Before you make any decisions, we need to cover the worst seats on the plane, which are in the back, the very back to be more specific. The seats that you should absolutely never pick on a plane for any reason are those in the very back row since they do not recline and are right beside the bathrooms. Stinky. Other seats to avoid include those directly in front of an exit row since they may have limited or no recline as well. The tool that I am using here is a free website called SeatGuru where you can type in your exact flight number and it will show you the best and the worst seats. It's great to check because even random economy seats, like these by the window in row 33, might have defects like a misaligned window. I'll leave a link to SeatGuru in the description if you want to check it out for your next flight. A specialty type of seat to be aware of are bulkhead seats. Bulkhead seats are those found directly behind a wall. Some people love them because you get extra leg room and you don't have anyone reclining into your space since there are no seats in front of you. And then some people hate them since you have no under seat storage and all of your stuff needs to go in an overhead bin. Oftentimes the armrests do not go up or down and they have these flimsy tray tables and TVs that pop out of the armrest since you do not have them attached to the seat in front of you. I personally do not like these seats. Exit row seats also have pros and cons since they have extra leg room and you are in a good spot to evacuate in the case of an emergency but it is by far the coldest spot on the plane and sometimes there's an extra fee to book an exit row seat. And here is one of my favorite hacks if you are flying on a larger plane that happens to have a center row of three or four seats. Selecting a center aisle seat is better than selecting an aisle seat on either side of the plane. You could be seated in an aisle seat on one of these center rows and never have to get up for the passengers seated beside you. In comparison to if you are in an aisle seat on one side of the plane, you need to be getting up every single time the window seat or the middle seat passenger decide to get out. A center row aisle seat near the middle of the plane away from the bathrooms is my preferred seat. That is assuming I'm not flying with United Airlines and following Wilma boarding protocols. Let us know down in the comments where you hope to sit on your next flight. And then also don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join us back here for more travel tips and hacks next week. Thank you so much for watching and safe travels. Bye.